We're back. Nick, how you doing? Doing good. I appreciate it. Awesome. Emerson, how you doing? I'm well, thanks. Looks like everyone's drinking, so yeah, obviously um, we're doing well. Likewise. Um, yeah. Um, we are going to talk about some offense today. Are you guys cool with that? Nick and Emerson, you guys cool with that? I'm excited. Okay. I love okay. it. Um, with that love being it. said, we can all agree that Jeff Levy has been a awesome offensive coordinator. Am I right? Definitely. And it was a very good pick on Venables to have him come to Oklahoma. Um, a lot of people are curious on the scheme that Levy brings to this offense in the 2022 Oklahoma Sooners. We obviously don't know specifically what's going to happen, but Nick, what are you thinking? So Levy's bread and butter. He wants to be physical up front, and they want to be – strong and established run game he utilizes spacing better than anybody in the country he gets the defense spread out as an an alignment standpoint the wide receivers on the outside will be lined up two to three yards outside the numbers this makes defensive backs follow those wide receivers and dbs typically line up seven yards off the football um, about one to two yards inside the wide receivers to maintain the leverage I've seen a specific formation been, been ran by Levy. That's three wide receiver set. You got a running back as well, shotgun formation, and H back lined up right behind the tackle. And in this running formation, the H back pulls as well as a guard, I believe, and the tackle seals inside. But this is just going to give a great opportunity for Braden Willis and Daniel Parker to destroy in the run game blocking. Um, these, there's, there's so much green grass in the second level because those DBs are spread out so wide that the, the running back makes one guy miss and he's breaking a 50 to 60 yard touchdown run. And DBs also have to respect the wide receivers because he does a really good job running smoke screens and bubble screens. And I've also seen him run, you know, fake bubble screens, and then the wide receiver goes upfield and it's, a, it's another 50-yard touchdown. All he does is get first downs and touchdowns all day long. DBs bite on it, and it just forces him to respect his short yards gain. Also, it, it's just a big – advantage when it comes to splits and angles that the defense has to take and it's very fast paced it's methodical he's consistently coached top top 10 scoring offenses total yards passing rushing plays ran and first downs it's all consistent and it's all the categories you want. And even in, in 2019, when he had Dylan Gabriel as his quarterback, the, the team aver averaged 540 yards a game. So, oh, my God. It's, it's as, absolutely ridiculous. But don't forget that we have Jerry Schmidt as, you know, the strength and conditioning coach. So we're going to be tough Woo! up front. And we're, we're going to be fast. It's, it's going to be crazy. I'm telling you, I'm so excited for Jeff Levy to be our offensive coordinator. And, you know, when you got defensive mind like Brent Vittables on the other side, it's the perfect combination. Yeah, I agree, Nick. Uh, he really does like to spread the field out. And, I mean, honestly, like, if you think about it with those wide receivers split out so wide, you're taking both corners and at least one safety – out of the running play, out of the box, every game, every play, every play. And I like what you said about the, the the smoke screens and the split screens, the wide receiver screens. I was just watching the Arkansas Old Miss tape from uh, 21, and like like you said, the the they they run a fake wide receiver screen, and the wide receiver goes on a deep post, and he's gone. It's a 50-yard touchdown, and that's something that he's going to capitalize on a lot. And as soon, and he's going to have Dylan Gabriel recognizing that that if both of those, you know, if that uh, corner and that safety or nickelback or linebacker, whoever's out there on the slot receiver, if they both bite on that bubble screen and they let that wide receiver go, it's a touchdown, touchdown, 
especially with Oklahoma's talent. Like, I mean, Marvin Mims ain't getting caught by no one, you know. So that's really exciting, and and he obviously he's got. I mean, he's honestly just as good as Lincoln Riley was at getting wide receivers into open space, getting busted coverages on plays and confusing the defense and getting those wide receivers to places where they can make plays. And then in the run game, like you said, like it's going to be so refreshing for Oklahoma fans, I think, in my opinion, for them to see them run something other than GT counter. Oh, my gosh. How many times did we see them run GT counter last year? I mean, and I get it. It's a good play. But every play has its time and place. You can't run a play – you know, 15, 20 times a game and expect it to have success long-term down the stretch. He's really good at coaching up his O-line uh, to where they understand what this, what the philosophy of the play is and what they're trying to do. And if, you know, if, if that defensive end lines up head up on the tackle or if he lines up slightly inside, you know, that tackle understands, okay, well now – depending on what to play, you know, I'm going to block down on this guy and let the H-back kick out the linebacker versus, uh, you know, what the original plan of the thing was where, you know, having the tackle kick out the linebacker and the H-back go up to the second level. He's really good at having his offenses uh, adjust for that. And like you said, this is a, a, an offense where physical H-back and tight end blocking is going to get them dividends in the run game. And it almost makes you sad to see, like, you know, Kennedy Brooks going to the NFL because a guy with that kind of vision in that kind of scheme, oh, my gosh. Oh, I know. He would Absolutely. have a heyday. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but obviously Eric Gray, you know, he's no slouch either. So he'll be fine. He'll be fine. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's just really exciting to see uh, kind of a new breath of fresh air and understanding that, hey, we're not just going to run GT counter uh, down their throats and hope that it works because we have better athletes. We're actually going to scheme around this and uh, have our better athletes set up in a better position in the run game to, uh, you know, have more effectiveness. So yeah. that's pretty much and, all I got to say. Hey, there's going to be a lot of green grass for those running yes. backs. Those safeties are going to be forced to, to come up and make plays in the box. And you make those guys miss, it's it's going to be an easy touchdown. Plus, they have to respect that that play action game, which gives guys just an easy route for the deep attack and the deep ball. So it, it's going to be fun watching how Levy breaks it down. And when was the last time we honestly saw like Oklahoma going tempo, like over and over and over and over again? Last time really was Sam Bradford in yep. the 2008 season and. What happened then? They broke an NCAA record and put up 60 points on five consecutive opponents. And guys, so. it, it seems like, you know, every year Oklahoma either has a really good offense and a very terrible defense or a good defense and a terrible offense. Guys, this is brewing up to be possibly a very good defense and a very good offense. So take what you want with that. So Hopefully, yes. You guys be the judge. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up on that. Do you guys have anything, any last comments on, you know, Levy and the offense and the season coming up? It's just going to be very exciting putting it all together. I'm so excited for this next season. Yeah. I think, I think every Oklahoma fan is excited to see some changes in the offense. They got stale under, under Lincoln. So. Yes, Agreed. and a change of mindset. So, Boomer Sooner, adios. Boomer.